Over the last century, over 100 million boys have taken the Scout Oath. The oath to become men of character through their participation in the Boy Scouts of America. Teddy Roosevelt, himself a local Scout leader, once said, More and more I have grown to believe in the Boy Scout movement. I regard it as one of the movements most full of promise for the future here in America. Decades later, his words have proven true. Four of our presidents, 181 NASA astronauts, 36% of the West Point cadets, 22% of the Air Force Academy cadets, 189 members of the current Congress and 18 current state governors have all been shaped by their participation in Boy Scouts. The Scouts don't just earn merit badges for things like camping and hiking. In 2012, Boy Scouts donated $5.5 billion worth of volunteer time across America, doing things like litter cleanup, improving public parks, helping charities upgrade their facilities, food collection, and conservation projects. Over the decades, 114 million young men have put on a Boy Scout uniform. Each one has sworn to live by the Scout Oath and Law. They have pledged to be brave, reverent, and morally straight. Given the Scouts' commitment to God, country, and morality, it is not hard to see why churches have played a key role in scouting. Over 70% of Scout troops are chartered by faith-based organizations. But that relationship is at risk, as is the future of one of the last non-religious institutions that has not yielded to political correctness. Under pressure from corporate elites and homosexual activists, the leadership of the Boy Scouts is proposing a change regarding open homosexuality in the Scouts. It's a change that would introduce what scouts themselves call open and avowed homosexuality into scouting. It would change Boy Scouts forever. The impact of such a change would not be limited to the Boy Scouts of America. It will dramatically alter the culture and moral landscape of America. We want to thank you for joining us in this special Sunday night nationwide simulcast, Stand with Scouts Sunday. Now, Live from the Family Research Council studios in Washington, D.C., is the president of Family Research Council, Tony Perkins. Well, joining me now is the governor of the uh, Lone Star State, the state of Texas, Governor Rick Perry. Governor, thanks for being with us. Tony, it's a great privilege to be with you, as always, and particularly about this subject matter that we're talking about today. Well, let's jump right into it, Governor, because you are an Eagle Scout. Uh, you have a son that uh, is an Eagle Scout as well. You've written a book about scouting that I just mentioned. Uh, tell us about what scouting means to you and your family. Well, in that very rural area of Texas I grew up, 200 miles or so west of Fort Worth in the community of Paint Creek, 16 miles from the closest place that had a post office in Haskell County. Uh, we had a very active scout troop. Gene Overton was uh, uh, the scout master class of 1932 from the beloved Texas A&M. And uh, he came home after the war and, and uh, he was not only my scout master, he was also the superintendent of the Sunday school uh, classes that we had, and he was the president of the school board. So this was a man who had a lot of influence on young people's lives. And so uh, scouting was the um, extra uh, extracurricular activity that a lot of young men, along with the uh, 4-H uh, and church and school, that was about it in our community. So it was a very uh, big part of our lives. We went on a lot of campouts, uh, went on uh, uh, summer camp uh, and did a, all of that uh, scouting work and but it was the uh, it, it was truly a powerful part of our growing up and so uh, when I became an Eagle Scout at the relatively young age of 14 it was also the summer of 1964 uh, that uh, the National Jamboree was occurring in uh, Valley Forge uh, Pennsylvania and we went to Washington DC and saw the uh, uh, our congressional delegation picture outside on the Capitol there, uh, steps with our congressman. Uh, we toured the Capitol. We learned about uh, government. Uh, I suspect that part of that was uh, uh, a, a seed that was planted in about public service and about government uh, at that age. We went off to, uh, of course, Philadelphia and 
saw the Liberty Bell and, and uh, uh, all of the trappings of our countries being farmed. And we went to New York City for the World's Fair in 1964. So for a kid from uh, Paint Creek, Texas, who had really never seen much of the world at all, I got a great exposure. Some 50,000 young men came together there. Uh, Lyndon Johnson flew in on his helicopter and Lady Baden-Powell also made one of her last uh, appearances at a national jamboree. Scouting for myself and for my son, a uh, very important foundational um, organization that uh, uh, taught not just my son and myself, but millions of young men uh, how to be better leaders. Uh, when an Eagle Scout comes across my desk in, in, a, in a resume, that one gets set aside, Tony, because I know something about that individual without ever meeting them, that uh, they're self-starters. They started onto a long path, uh, that long path being uh, to get that Eagle Scout. They followed a, uh, a very uh, clear blueprint, uh, but an arduous task at an early age in their life uh, to finalize and to earn their Eagle Scout Award. And if they had that type of character, they had that type of values instilled in them at that early age, uh, chances are very strong that uh, they still have those as an adult. And that's the kind of people I want to be associated with, the kind of people I want to be working with, the kind of people I want to hire if I'm a businessman or woman in this country. So scouting uh, has for over a century now been the real bedrock of values and, and traditions uh, and developer of men. And it's the kind of young men, by and large, that you want knocking on your door to take your daughter out on a date or, for that matter, uh, standing beside you if you're in a fight for uh, your life in the military or whether or not uh, you're trying to make a dollar in the free market uh, capitalistic system that we have in this country. Well, Governor, let me uh, kind of wrap this up because you, you wrote uh, five years ago, so in 2008, you wrote On My Honor, defending the scouts and their position then. Of course, we've seen a lot has happened in five years. But going back to your experience, learning your, your role as a responsible citizen, as the governor of the largest state, as a governor that uh, obviously has seen the impact of the breakup of the family, there, in my opinion, I don't think there's ever been a a greater need for the role of the scouts to help boys make that difficult transition from adolescence into manhood when you've got 70 percent of uh, kids in inner cities growing up without a dad. Uh, incredibly powerful um, and, and you know a, a lot of us were blessed to uh, have grown up with uh, uh, two parent families and uh, in somewhat of a you know uh, bucolic type of a um, of, of an existence, but uh, in today's world, that's not the case. And Boy Scouts, a lot of times, uh, is the only really um, serious, mature uh, father figure from time to time that they get uh, in, in some of the inner cities, and they do a great job. And, and you know, whether it's in the barrios, uh, or whether it's in the, the inner cities, or whether it's in a rural area where. Uh, you know, some kids are really in need of that adult, uh, fatherly type of, uh, of surrounding. I think it's very important that Boy Scouts do uh, play that role. And, and the values, when they learn about, uh, you know, the, to be reverent to, to uh, the spiritual side of growing up, it's really important. Uh, I know there are those in the world today that would tear that apart. Uh, but the fact is, this is a private organization. They're Values and principles have worked for a, a century now. And for pop culture to come in and try to, to tear that up because it just happens to be the, uh, you know, the flavor of the, of the month, so to speak, and, and to tear apart one of the great organizations that have served millions of young men, helped them to become uh, men and to become great fathers. And, and, uh, and, and that is just not appropriate. And frankly, I hope the, the American people will stand up and say, you know, not, not on my watch. Um, as you see right over my, my shoulder right there, there's a, there's a picture on the wall. I'm in the library of the, of the Texas governor's mansion, and the greatest governor that ever served this state was Sam Houston. And from this library that I speak, he made a powerful decision uh, that cost him his governorship. 
uh, he was against slavery, and he stood up and, 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 and very passionately said, you know, Texas does not need to leave the Union. And, and he was right, but it cost him his governorship. But that's the type of principled leadership. That's the type of c courage uh, that I hope people across this country on this issue of, uh, of scouts and, and keeping the Boy Scouts the organization that it is today, because it is serving young men and women. And, and if we change and, and become more like pop culture, young men will be not as well served, America will not be as well served, and Boy Scouts will start on a decline that I don't think will serve this country well as we go into the future. Governor Rick Perry, thanks so much for being with us and uh, taking time out to uh, share your thoughts and your admonition on such an important issue. Thank you, Tony. Godspeed and, and uh, continue good luck. I will do my best to do my duty to guide my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight.